Welcome back to Coffee with Coaches. I hope you're healthy, safe, and coping with these times. We started our Coffee with Coaches podcast a couple of years ago to tell the stories of our Campbell coaches, their upbringing and background, their coaching journey, successes, and insight. Search Coffee with Coaches Campbell online or wherever you're getting this now and have a listen to great insight from all of our coaches. Coaches who are now dealing with unprecedented challenges and a unique sports landscape thanks to COVID-19. How are they coping? How are their student athletes doing? How is working from home? Our goal is to give you a look inside. I'm Chris Amire, and this is Coffee with Coaches. Campbell head baseball coach Justin Hare was in the middle of the baseball season when the world changed. A baseball season where his team was favored to win their third straight Big South title. Over the last decade, Hare has built Campbell baseball into a power. His team was one win away from a super regional berth last season. And the goal of getting Campbell to Omaha is more reality than dream now. But right now, Hare is focused on communicating with his student athletes, his coaches, and his other team that he is around the most these days, his wife and three sons at home. Stick around till the end and you'll hear great stories of the Hare boys wiffle ball development. But first, we begin back almost one month ago when everything stopped. It was uh, really challenging. I think that um, anytime you get into a situation where there's a bunch of uncertainty and there's a lot of things outside of your control, it's easy to lose track of, of really what's important. And as, as we're kind of going through that process of um, just, just how rapidly the world around us was kind of changing and, and, you know, our coaching staff, our players, our support staff, we just wanted wanted it to be normal. You know, you just want it to be um, what you thought it was going to be. We just want to get off the bus at Charleston Southern and be able to go play. We just want to be able to, to come home and start conference play at home the next weekend and, and, and do all those things and go to class on Monday and, and all that kind of stuff, you know. So it was certainly a unique situation. Um, one that's really hard, a lot of emotion, um, kind of, kind of running through our guys, running through our staff and, uh, you just try to manage it as best you can and, and, um, you know, lock into the old adage of just trying to control what you can control. You know, we could control our response. We could control, um, you know, making sure that we were doing, you know, the things that we were recommended to do and, and, you know, try to make the most of, of every situation that we're given. How have your student athletes handled this unique situation? Uh, you know, I think it's a mixed bag. I think that there's, you know, we, we've got some guys that, that are struggling, some guys that, that uh, you know, just from a mental standpoint, I think it's been a grind on some of those guys, especially some of the older guys that, that know their careers, um, you know, kind of come into a close or, or maybe they've fought injuries, you know, over the last couple of years and, this is really going to be, you know, what's going to be their last go around or, or one of their last opportunities to put on a uniform. And, you know, they're struggling to come to grips with that. There's days that, that I struggle to come to grips with, with, you know, the, the fact that this time of year is, is the year is the time of year that we have every day for four months planned out. This is what we're going to do today. We got practice today. We got game here today. We're traveling here. We're doing this. And so I think when you lose a little bit of that, and, and I think this is definitely true for 18 to 22 year olds that, that, you know, want an identity that, that, that associates so much with what we do on a day-to-day -day basis that sometimes you can feel lost. You can feel like, uh, man, I don't really know what, you know, what's my purpose today. What, what am I doing, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis? And so I think some of those guys are struggling, but I, but I also believe that, that our guys, um, baseball guys in general, I think, are are uniquely prepared to to handle this because there is so much in our game and our sport. There is so much uh, that you can't control. There, there is only so many things within the game and within your preparation that that you can control. And that's something that we talk about a bunch. Is is just trying to um, to handle the adversity that we know is going to come. You know, we we know that that uh, th that we're going to face hard days and there's going to be challenges and, and sometimes things are going to seem unfair. Um, but we also get the, the opportunity to choose how we respond to those things. And so, um, so I think, you know, I think 
by and large, I think our guys have done a really good job of, of managing it um, and, and trying to make the most out of it, staying active and, and, and trying to finish strong in the classroom. Um, you know, we've had 10 or 12 dudes stay around here and, and um, you know, you know, we got guys from all over the country and we got guys that, Hey, there's no place I'd rather be than, than being around here and, and being around some of these other guys. So um, it's been good to see them respond from that standpoint. Coach, you mentioned it, and we both know it being in baseball for so long that it is such a rhythm. And unlike the other sports, it's every day. You're playing five days a week. You're playing every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. What has it been like for you personally that has been in this rhythm as a player or a coach for decades now? What is this like to have a march in now in April like this? it's like groundhog day. Um, you, you know, like it's, you know, I think part of why we like, you know, the baseball season is there is some rhythm and there is some consistency, but there is, you know, you're going to a new ballpark or, or, you know, you're, you're getting into situations that maybe you've never seen before. Um, there's so much, there, there's, there's so much, um, fun uncertainty within the game of baseball that, that we, we get addicted to that a little bit. We get addicted to, um, you know, or, or really, really enjoy that, um, that rhythm of playing all the time, practicing all the time, um, pregame, postgame, all that. But, but we also get, you know, we also get into that rhythm of, of, uh, man, what, what are we going to get to see today? We, we may go out there and watch a guy throw a no hitter you know, a guy hit four home runs or a guy, whatever, like, you, you know, there's, there's that, that thrill of seeing something new every day. And, and right now, you know, the adjustment is um, not only being at home a lot more than I've ever been at home any spring or any, you know, two or three week period of time ever in my entire professional career, um, you know, but just adjusting to that, like what, what, what is that new normal? What is that new routine? You know, because baseball is such, what we do is such routine driven. We're going to spend this amount of time on scouting reports. And this is when I like to do that. And, and this is how we get prepared going into the weekend and, and so on and so forth. And now it's heck, I don't even know what day it is half the time. You know, it's just, it's the same day over and over again, you wake up and, and you're at the house 99% of the time and, and uh, you know, which has been great and that's been fun and, and being around my family and stuff. But, but there is that piece that, you know, that hollow in, in your belly, that's like, man, you know, we should be playing, you know, we should be getting ready to play USC upstate at home tonight, you know, and, and uh, man, we were supposed to play at Wilmington last week or, or whatever it is, uh, you know, and, and so, it's, it's a tricky balance. You know, I think the first week that we were at home, I really struggled. You know, there, there was, um, not a lot of, um, excitement, like in my body language, probably my wife was probably like, man, what, what is wrong with this guy? Like, this isn't who he normally is, you know, but I think as you, as, as you get into it more and you understand, you know, what we're dealing with in a, in a much grander scheme of things worldwide, I think you, you know, you just lock into, Hey man, I'm going to make the best out of, out of the time that I have at home or, or wherever it is that, that I need to be. Um, and try to make sure that, that we make it through this as best we can. Um, and try not to get swallowed up in the, in the entirety of man, this got canceled and we have no idea what this is going to do and how long it's going to take. I think if you get swallowed up in that, you got a chance to, to go down a, a pretty dark hole pretty fast. And so we're just trying to break it into small pieces and, and enjoy each moment that we get, and make the most of it. Coach, I know you, your coaching staff and your players, as we've talked about, everybody realizes the bigger picture and how we've had to cancel seasons and keep everybody apart because uh, of the greater good and the virus. But when you think back to especially your seniors, and I know there is still – a lot of different things up in the air, but the fact of how everybody kind of went away, you, you really don't get that with your, with your seniors. And that's got to be one of the more heartbreaking parts for the team and for, for you and the coaching staff. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, obviously we want to set up, you know, everything that we possibly can for, for our guys to be able to have an opportunity to come back or, or, put a uniform on, whether it's here in Campbell or, or maybe somewhere else, if they choose to, to use that year of eligibility somewhere else. So we want to make that happen, but, but it is really tough 
um, you know, it, it is really tough to um, look at some of those guys that I know will not be coming back. They're going to graduate and they've already got jobs lined up or, or they've already got grad school lined up elsewhere. Um, and, and, and to know that we're not going to get an opportunity to maybe dog pile. We're not going to get that opportunity to, to hug those guys and tell them thank you in the traditional sense of, of the way that we've done it in the past. And so, you know, just like a lot of things, sometimes you just have to adapt and overcome and, and, and figure out how to do it best, you know? And, and so hopefully we'll, we'll have an opportunity to, to get this group back, um, you know, in the fall, hopefully, and, and, and try to celebrate them, you know, and just try to be around them and, and try to tell them how much we love them and how much, you know, whether they were here for a year, two years, 10 years, five years, whatever, however long they've been here, um, you know, that, that we get a chance to love on them one more time and, and just celebrate being together, you know, because regardless of the fact we only got 16 games this spring, we got 16 games, you know, we got 16 opportunities to put on the uniform against somebody else. We got all fall and, and, and worked very closely with, with all the guys that we had in our, in our locker room and they worked very closely together. And, and there's a, a certain bond that comes along with that, that, that can't be broken and, and it should be celebrated. And, um, you know, so we got to adjust on the fly and, and try to figure out how to celebrate those guys and, and, and love on them and support them as best we can. Coach, you have built this program into a nationally recognized program, a, a Big South champion, back-to-back, of course, regular season and Big South tournament titles, back-to-back regional appearances. You have you have seen it all over this last decade as you have you had built this program and you have had good times and you have had different uncertain times. How do you handle these uncertain times with your program? I think you just try to stay the course. You know, I think that um, the biggest piece of of um, leadership in in uncertain times and and certainly in in challenging times, I think. I think when things are going really good, when you're winning a bunch of games in a row or you're winning a bunch of championships and, and things are rolling, I think that um, leadership kind of runs itself. I think that people are, are um, willing to listen to what you have to say when, when you win or, or things are going good or everybody's feeling good. Um, and And so you can kind of let some of those good times kind of roll, you know, but then when you face some adversity and, and you have some uncertainty and, um, you have a lot more questions than you have answers just in general, I think that's where, um, whether that's me or, or anybody in our coaching staff or, or even, you know, some guys in our program, I think that, that, that there's a void there of, of knowing what's going to happen next. And I think that if, you have the opportunity to slide in as a leader in some of those voids. You have to do it with, with clear and constant and honest and transparent communication. And so I think that's been a piece with, with our coaching staff and and myself in particular that, Hey, I may not have all the answers. I I don't know what the NCAA is going to do. I don't know what our school is going to do in terms of, you know, giving opportunities back and being able to fund this or that, or, Hey, I don't know what this looks like, but here's what I do know. Classes keep going on. Um, We get to keep waking up every morning and, and, and try to find a way to be positive. And, and you know what, when I have answers, I'm going to give them to you. When I haven't checked in with you in two or three days, like you're going to get an email or a text from me that says, Hey, this is what we got going on. Maybe no new news or whatever, but I just think that constant clear communication can be reassuring of, Hey, they, you know, we haven't been forgot about, you know, we're we're not just out here um, trying to figure it out on our own. We're still all in this together, whether we're spread back out all over across the country um, or not. I think that that's where when, when crisis and adversity hits, there is that need for leadership. And and that starts with, with a clear, constant communication level of, Hey, here's where we are. Here's where we're trying to get to. Here's the plan to get there. And I'm going to keep you updated along the way, whether or not that plan goes exactly how we want it to or not, we're going to be able to adjust and and move on the fly, but you're going to hear from me and you're going to hear it very clearly from me. Hey, this is where we're headed. This is the vision. This is what we got. And and we're going to figure it out, you know, and, and I promise you that we're working to figure it out. We're working for, 
for the good of our program and for the good of you. And I think that that helps, um, you know, I think that helps navigate some of that uncertainty. It helps navigate some of that adversity. I think it helps um, calm some of those anxieties that, that come along with those, um, you know, crisis moments and, and, you know, kind of the, the void of, Hey, that, that consistent, um, Hey, this isn't exactly how we thought it was going to go. Um, so I think that's really, really important to, um, be able to, to do that and, and communicate clearly with our guys. Coach, is that communication, does that come from some lessons you have learned when you have had this current couple years of, of success winning the back-to-back titles? Is that something you've applied from what you do for these guys in the season and on the field to now in this very unique time? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I think that just comes from, you know, I, I just think from life experience, you know, if you, if you look back over the last five or six years, I mean, our program's been, been through some, some really high times, obviously the last couple of years, winning some championships and and going to some regionals, we've been through some down times too. We had some NCAA issues and, and, and stuff with the APR that we had to navigate through in in 2016 and, and, and then try to crawl out of that um, and, and, and make some tough calls and call recruits and, and tell them, hey, this is, you know, we're going to, you know, we've got a postseason opportunity that, that's going to, you know, that we're going to have to give up here. And, and we've got to do, you know, so you you get put in these different situations and you have to navigate some of it. And as a younger head coach or, or, a, or a newer head coach, man, hey, I, I felt like I told our old athletic director, Bob Roller, this at the time. I said, man, I, I don't know there's probably not a better training ground than, than the first 18 months that I was on the job as the head coach here in Campbell, because there was a lot of challenges, um, you know, and, and some, uh, some uncertainty and some adversity. And so I learned a lot in that time. I learned how to be a better communicator. I learned how important communication was um, to calm some of that, no matter how hard it was on me, it helped the people that were hearing it, you know, it helped the people that, that were getting some of that communication um, and not to say that I was always the best at it, but I, but, but I, I try to take some of those lessons that, that we learned, um, through those first couple of years of, of struggle and adversity and where we've grown out of that, um, and then been able to have some success and, and capitalize on all that. And I think it's also been a conscious effort on our, on our, um, program side to, to get better. You know, we, we want to get better. We don't want to stay the same. We don't, I don't want to be the same um, caliber head coach I was in, in 2015 in 2020, I want to be better, you know, just like, you know, if we talk a year from now, Chris, I want to be better, um, than I am right now, you know, and I think that, that, that constant level of, of seeking out how to be a better leader, how to be a better communicator, um, what that means, how, how to be more positive, how to find the good parts of even challenging situations, how to take adversity and turn it into, um, long-term good, um, and benefit for you and your program, I think are all things that, that we've learned over the last five or six years that, that help us get better, that help us be tougher in, 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 in trying situations that help us, um, navigate some uncertainty and some adversity and, and be able to bounce back a little bit faster. And I think if, if you go back and, and look at the way we've performed over the last couple of years, and how we've continued to get better throughout the season, I think a lot of that has to do with our ability to understand adversity, our ability to communicate our way through it, um, and our ability to learn from it and hopefully get better in a short period of time. Coach, 2016, when you were going through all this, that wasn't that long ago. I know you are always looking forward, appreciating what you've been a part of and and, and what you have built, but you have had some moments where – you haven't been out on the field this last month. Um, you've had some moments, uh, not necessarily to yourself with your family at home, which I, which we will get to in a bit. But when you think about these past two years and what they have been, what they have meant to you and the program and where you have come in such a quick amount of time, have, have you had time to reflect on that maybe a little bit more than you usually would in the middle of a season? Yeah, I think that um... – it's been interesting because, you know, we're in the first week of April and it feels like we're in the first week of July. You know, it feels, you know, this is the the feeling that you get in the middle of the summer 
when none of your guys are around or they're just in summer school and you can't be working with them or, or whatever it is. And, 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 uh, that, you know, you got a little bit of downtime and some time at home. And, and so you never get this time in March or April. Um, and I think that, that having some of this downtime and, and some of this time to of self-reflection and program reflection, you just really look back at the guys that have been a part of your program, both as a coaching staff, you know, cause I've had some pretty special guys that have, that have made a, a big effect um, and had a big investment in our program, even if they were just here for a year or two um, or five or six, whatever it's been um, to the players that you've had in your program um, and maybe what they're going through, you know, in, in real life situations, some of them are, you know, running their own businesses and, and now we're trying to navigate some of that. Some of them are, are trying to figure out what's next in, in their life. Some of them are, are, you know, are from countries that, that are, that are getting hit a lot harder by this crisis and, and they don't, they can't go home, you know? And so, um, you start to think about those personalities and those people, um, and the people that have invested so much in, in our program. Um, and you just, and this is a good thing because you become really thankful, you know, you, 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 you become really thankful for the experiences that we've been fortunate to have over the last couple of years. We, you know, fortunate for, for guys like Jake Wells and Ryan Bertram that, that were only here for a year on our staff. Um, but that, that invested a tremendous amount and had a huge impact on where we are today. And, and certainly thankful for guys like Chris Marks, who, you know, was here with me from day one as a head coach through my first five years. And, and, uh, I was, you know, I talked to that guy two or three times a week, you know, and, and, um, you know, so you become super thankful for those guys and super thankful for, for the players that, that believed in some of that transition and bought into some of that transition and, and really took ownership of some of the transition, um, over the last two or three years. Um, and it really brings a smile to your face because it's, it, you know, we talk about this all the time and nobody's above the team. Nobody's above the program. We haven't had success because, because of me, you know, we've had success because of our, the, the people that are in our program and, and the people that we've been fortunate enough to, to surround ourselves with, um, you know, our academic coordinator, Liz Homans, you know, in my opinion, the best academic coordinator on campus, our strength coach, Matt Rodriguez, same thing, you know, and so we've got guys, you know, Becky Younger's been a tremendous athletic trainer. Um, they've all, we, we've got people that, that surround our program and within our program that are just really, really special people. And, um, and because of that, when you have time to reflect, you just think of how fortunate you are. You think of how thankful you are that, that they see the vision, they buy into the vision. Um, they work for that vision because it's important to them too. And, uh, and it puts a big smile on your face, you know, and, and I mean, there, there's been plenty of studies that say you can't be, um, grateful and stressed at the same time. So, you know, in those moments of uncertainty for us, for me, for you, for, for the world where, where you can easily get swallowed up in all the negative news, man, it's, it's important, I think, to, to find some things to be thankful for and, as you sit and reflect on the last two and a half, three years and, and the transition that our programs made, you start thinking of some of the people that, that really invested in that, that transition, man, it's, it's, uh, it's really easy to be thankful. And, and, uh, some of that worry and that stress kind of goes away. That's interesting. When you say you can, uh, be, have a smile on your face and stress at the same time. I know that probably fits exactly into this transition. When we talk about your home life, you, your team behind the team, um, has come more uh, into the picture in March and April than I know they usually do because you're on the road and that you have you have three boys at home, a wonderful and very patient wife. What has Justin Hare's home life been in March and April? I know a lot different than it has been usually in March and April. Yeah, yeah. Team Hare has now become like number one priority all the time, you know. So Team Hare's normally, I, I you know, it's funny because I normally, and we try to make a, a pretty good habit of this in, in normal, in a normal circumstance is, is when I'm home or, and we don't have a game. Normally I try to get two meals a day with my family, probably breakfast and then, and then hopefully dinner at some point, whether it's up at the office or at home. 
or whatever. So I'll get like somewhere between two to three hours every day that we're in town and not playing a night game that, that we'll get two to three hours, um, with my family, with, with my boys and my wife, which is awesome. Uh, I know a lot of people don't get that. Um, we're fortunate that, that we're at home a lot. We play in a conference that, that, you know, we're within four hours. So we get home, you know, a little bit earlier than, than some people. And, and, um, you know, so we get that. So that's, that's awesome. you right. Like in a, in a normal day. Well, now over the last three weeks, instead of two to three hours, um, it's been like 13 or 14 hours. So there's been a huge transition. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so we've, we've, you know, we've, uh, we've more than quadrupled our amount of time that, that we get with each other on a day to day basis. And it's, and it's, uh, and it's not just like, I don't know, like three or four times a week, it's been seven days a week and, and so on and so forth. So, um, so we've quad quadrupled that time. Um, and, uh, you know, for the most part, man, Chris, it's been great. You know, we, uh, we've been fortunate that, that the weather's been really good. So we've been able to get out, uh, get outside and play and, and, um, and do some different stuff, go on walks in the neighborhood and, and put the inflatable water slide in the backyard. It's been in the eighties on the weekend. So it's been great. Um, my wife's been, been locking it down on some, some kindergarten and preschool work for, for our two older boys. Um, they normally knock that out in the morning while I play with our, our two-year-old and keep him occupied. And, um, instead of two to two, two meals a day, it's, it's all three meals a day and, um, and, and quarantine snacks throughout. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's been fun. It, it's been a different challenge to be honest with you. You know, if, if I, if I, if I'm honest with myself, it, it has been a different challenge, man. It's a different grind. You know, it's a different grind than, than being up at the office and working a hundred hours a week, um, you know, with our team and, and, and trying to figure out how to win and do some of that stuff. It's definitely a different grind, but, but it's fun. And, um, it can be pretty tiring in a different way because man, those guys, they're nonstop, you know, our, our boys are nonstop, which is awesome, you know, in, in the bigger picture. But sometimes you're like, man, if I hear daddy one more time today, like I <laughs> might go crazy, like daddy, 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 you know, which, you know, like, again, like you sit back and, 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 you know, you, you look at it in the big picture and, you know, I'll look back 10 years from now and think, man, that was an awesome time. But man, when you're in that moment and it's the 6,000th time you've heard daddy um, and it's 930 <laughs> in the morning, like sometimes you're like, hey, I just I need a minute, like just chill out. You know, I probably said chill out like more. <laughs> I probably told my kids to chill out more in the last two weeks than I have in the last two years. So uh, <laughs> I, it's crazy. I, I I know part of your getting the gang at home and getting them outside, there were some pictures that surfaced uh, online. I don't know if these were doctored or not, but it seemed like you had the chalk lines of a, uh, of a pretty decent sized baseball diamond in your backyard. Is that accurate? That's, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, <laughs> we borrowed some spray paint from the office. Um, we'll give it back when we're done with it. I promise. But we borrowed some spray paint. Um, 40 foot baselines, um, for, for the youngsters, we got a, um, pitching rubber, we got a full infield, so it's pretty good. We've been working, you know, we've been working pretty good. Um, the boys want to, want to hit more. Jackson is swinging it left-handed Parker, our five-year-old. He's, uh, you know, going to be a right-handed banger type guy. I think, you know, he's, he's going to have some juice. There's going to be some swing and miss in there. And, um, uh, you know, so we, we hadn't really got into the two strike approach yet, but, um, yeah, man, it's been fun. You know, they, 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 uh, they love baseball, I think, because they, that's what they see daddy do all the time. Yeah. I, I've, I've really tried to, to just kind of, Hey, you know, you want to play basketball, you want to hike, you want to like Jackson's huge into like the military, like everything's about the army for him. So, like that we got to play army and air force this year. Like he was super fired up. Like he was like, Hey daddy, like, is it okay if I cheer for air force tonight? Like, because I think I'm going to go to the air force. I'm like, Hey man, you cheer for whoever you want. And then after the game he's like, Hey daddy, I, I cheered for the camels, but I like air force still. Is that cool? I'm like, yeah, man. Like, great. You know, like, so we want to like, let them be able to do whatever they want to do and be interested in. So when they're like, daddy, can we, 
like, can we, can we paint a baseball field? Yeah, man. Like I'll bring home some paint from work and, and we'll line it out. It'll be awesome. So, um, yeah, so it, that's been a lot of fun and, and, um, you know, just seeing those guys enjoy it and, and run around and do some different stuff, um, has been really, really fun. Well, Coach, thank you so much. I know we always uh, get onto something interesting whenever whenever we talk. I didn't know we would be getting a breakdown of potential prospects in the class of 2035, but I appreciate <laughs> you doing that for me uh, today. It, uh, it it means a lot. In, any talk of turfing the backyard maybe in the next budget cycle? Possibly. Maybe you know, see. You never know. You know. You never know. <laughs> we've got some. We've got some leftover pieces of turf from when we turfed our field here. Uh, you know, at, at the stadium. So, um, I may borrow some of that. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see if, if, if we start into sliding practice and we really tear up some of the grass, um, we may go to the turf, you know, just from a, just from a maintenance standpoint and, and the ability to, um, to practice all the time, you know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I think if, if Max really transitions from being a, you know, a smaller two-year-old, if he hits that growth spurt around four, um, and, and really becomes an advanced um, <laughs> wiffle ball player at four, then, then we might look at the turf and, and, and see where we need to go from there. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Well, coach, it's really, uh, about, the, it's really <laughs> about the players development. Yeah. You I know? mean, and so what's best for them is what's best for all of us. We will uh, get another report uh, on the development soon. Uh, coach, uh, thank you so much. I know uh, the, a, a difficult time, but thank you for spending time to kind of take us through what you're going through, and we will talk to you soon. Awesome. Appreciate it, Chris. Talk to you soon, man.